Hi, and welcome to a special edition of Jules Voto's Photo Focus. This is an exciting day for Nikon Z8 owners. Early this morning, Nikon released firmware 2.0 for the Nikon Z8, which is a major firmware update. I installed it a little while ago, and it took less than five minutes. So let me go over some of the major improvements and not so major with the Nikon Z8. You know what, before we get into those firmware updates to those changes, I, I just wanna say something in praise of Nikon. Ever since the Z6 and Z7 were introduced, Nikon has steadily improved through firmware updates their products. And this one to the Z8 is, not, is no minor update. It's a major update as we will see as I go through them. And there are more than what I'm going to talk about. So Nikon, thank you very much for making my Z. I love the Z8. I think it's a great camera, but now it's even better. And very happy, very pleased with my purchase. It'll be a year next month that I own it. I bought it when it first came out. I will be doing a video on my first year with the Nikon Z8 sometime in March. So let's go now with the improvements to the Z8. Probably one of the most anticipated improvements was subject detection birds. Now, the animal subject detection on the Z8 would detect birds and also the auto subject detection, but birds is specifically for birds. That was something that was added to the Z9 last year and I've read some reports on it and it seems to work really well. So I'm very happy to have that available now on the Nikon Z8. Number two is auto capture. Auto capture was something that was also added to the Z9 last year and you can set it for distance, you can set it for motion, if the camera detects motion, or subject detection. You could set it for a bird. If you have your camera aimed at, let's say, a perch in your backyard, when a bird lands on that perch, the camera will fire. That's also available in video. Number three is pixel shift shooting. That was a complete surprise. Now, the uh, recent Nikon ZF has pixel shift shooting. You could set it for 4, 8, 16, or 32 frames. Now, pixel shift shooting is only for still subjects with the camera mounted on a support, a tripod. What it does in the 4 and 8 shot mode, it will still give you a 45 megapixel image, but there should be an improvement in color. At the 16, and 32 shot mode, it will give you 180 megapixel images, improved color and improved noise. These images, whether 4, 8, 16, or 32, have to be merged in Nikon NX Studio. They added some new picture controls, flat monochrome, deep tone monochrome, and rich tone portrait. I haven't tried out any of these things. I will be trying them out and reporting down the road. Number five is focus point border thickness. You can now change the thickness of the focus point border. Either setting number one, which was the default, number two, which is a little bit thicker, and number three, which is even thicker still. It should, if you have trouble seeing your focus point, that will help it stand out a little bit more. Number six is you could program a function button to cycle through the AF area modes. If you find yourself changing area, AF area modes frequently, you could cycle through them and you could restrict the number of modes that are available through this cycle process. There's some new shutter sounds. Um, I tried that and uh, I don't see a big difference between the sounds, 
but that's something that's not important to me. There had been talk of having a shutter sound that sounds like a cat's meow. That is not available. Number eight is exit zoom in manual focus mode. When I shoot with manual focus lenses, I usually zoom in to 100% by pressing the OK button on the back of the camera. And then I have to press that OK button again to get out of the zoom mode. However, now all you have to do is lightly press on the shutter release, a half press on the shutter release, and it will take you out of that zoom mode. So that's a, a one less step that I have to do. And sometimes it's hard. If you want to shoot quickly, you have to press that OK button. No longer do you have to do that. Number nine is display focus distance in feet or meters. When using manual focus, if you either switch the lens to manual focus by the switch, or if you grab hold of the focus ring and start to turn it, a bar would display in the viewfinder, but it really gave you no distance information. Now the bar still displays, but right above the bar it will give you your distance, either feet or meters, however you set it up. So that's a great feature. I really like that. Number 10 is exposure delay mode. And you could set it to delay the shutter release over several different time frames. And uh, that again is something you would use if the camera were on a tripod and you didn't have a remote release or you didn't want to use the self timer. Now also Nikon updated a lot of their software. NX Studio has been updated. Also Nikon Tether and Nikon Camera Control Pro 2. So if you just go to the Nikon website Search for firmware to download the firmware, software to download the software, and uh, there's also some updates to some manuals which I didn't install. So I look forward to testing out most of these new features, especially the bird detection. I have read some things and seen some videos uh, from people using the Z9 and they say it works out really well. It will even find a bird in a busy background. So uh, I can't wait to try that one out. So I was expecting some of these firmware updates. I did not expect the pixel shift, and that's another one I would like to experiment with. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you have updated your firmware and have tried it out, let me know what you think. If you've tried out some of these new features, I'd love to hear your input. So I normally publish a new video every Monday morning and Wednesday morning at 11 a.m., but this, because of this firmware update, I had to make a video on this uh, right away. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you next time.